Bob Wiley from uh, Aloha Fishing Tackle. Man, it is yes, great sir. to see you, my friend. Good to see you, too. It's been a long time. You were jogging my memory before we got started here yep. about how I used to come into Arts Fishing Tackle with my kids. Yes. So tell me about that again. Well, um, I was there a long time. Um, you were with Terry with, and his brother? With Terry. Yeah. Um, Mr. Lampson, Mark Lampson was there when I right. first started. Is he around still? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I haven't heard um, in a while yeah. about Mark there. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, many moons ago, man. And your kids were gay big. Were they behaving or running around tearing the place they apart? Were, they were good. I, I'm sure Terry would have yelled at them if they were out of line. <laughs> I'm sure he just, you know, said something. But, uh, yeah, no, I remember those guys when they were really little. Little, maybe 10, 12 years old, something like that. Probably around that age. How old were you in those days? I was in my 20s. Oh, geez, yeah, you were really young. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. And I was doing 9.7.6.10 in those days? You were. Yeah, okay. You and then were. you went to the racetrack a couple we did, times? We did. We did a couple of uh, events. We were doing Events out over there. the Los Al track. Yeah. I did some charters with you guys. I think one was on the Queen. Uh, I think we did one on the Freedom as well. Something like that. Man, all these. And so how many years has it been since we've actually seen one another, if you Gosh, have to think about it, it's Rob? It's been, uh, man, since 20 years maybe. Wow. Maybe not how quite. time flies, close. man. Yeah, it's been probably. And I don't look a day over 90, do I? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, no, that was for me. That was about 100 pounds ago. So, yeah. <laughs> Got to get know. you on the carnivore diet with me, man. I Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'm come over, I'll come over there and talk you into it. I'm game. You like eating ribeye steaks? Love it. All right, perfect. You're right. in. Cool. This, this is not going to be difficult. I qualify? You call it right, right on, man. Man. Good. So, first of all, where's the Good. store located? We're in Let's Fountain get Valley. We're in Fountain Valley, right off the 405 freeway at the Magnolia exit on Magnolia and Warner. Um, in December will be four years for us. And yeah, Four they, years? I bet that flew by. It did. It really did, man. It's been going good. Yeah. Um, we opened up right there in the beginning of COVID. As soon as we opened up, we basically shut it down again, um, which was pretty scary. Yeah. But uh, it's been going good ever since, and fishing's been phenomenal. So that's a good thing. It's definitely helped, that's for sure. Have yeah. you ever seen fishing this good in your lifetime? I, I've I have been around not. for 50-something years. I have yeah. not. I have not. There's no way. No. And every year it's, you know, it, it it can't be better. It can't be, you know, bigger fish. It can't be more fish. And every year it is. It's more and it's bigger and they stay longer and, and everything else. So, knock on wood, they, they keep going this way. I know, man. Did you see these recent trips on the Pacific Queen? Yes. And the new Loan? Unreal. They got a, Unreal. A half a hump on 100 plus pound yeah. fish. Unreal. Yeah, it looks Unreal. like a long, it's, it's better than long range ever used to be. It is. Yeah, it really is. As evidenced by all the long range guys. Oh yeah, are up here I, now. And I and I and I feel for those guys. I know, like a lot of those arts guys, spend a lot of time, a lot of money looking for those big fish. And, yeah. Uh, now we can just go do it in the backyard, you know. Right. Exactly. So. <laughs> what What are your hours there at the store? We're here, or we're there, uh, ten to six, Tuesday through Friday, ten to four on Saturday, and we're closed on Sunday and Monday. Okay. And get a family day in, hopefully. Yeah, heck maybe, yeah. maybe sneak out, do some fishing. No, oh, usually in not. Your dreams. Yeah, usually not. You get into this business, you never fish again. No, I'm actually back in the tackle shop, usually on those days off, doing work in the back. Shoot, so. I go on a lot of fishing trips, and I have, I haven't caught a big bluefin. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm videotaping that's all right. the time, and people say to me, "Why don't you fish?" Why? And I, I try to make it clear that that's not my job anymore. My job is sure. like if I'm tied up on a. 100 pound bluefin sure and this eight-year-old kid gets his dream fish and i don't videotape that very much so. i've screwed it up very and, much yeah oh, sure yeah so sure. i mean same thing on this last trip on the amigo a uh, guy uh, john garma caught a 205 saw that fish. that was bitching wasn't that it? was an awesome fish yeah. yes yeah and i was so happy i was able to get that and that was uh, cool it's it's really cool stuff what do you do uh, do you do custom rods what kind of services do. do you have at the store? We do. We do custom rod building. We do rod repair, reel repair. Um, you know, a lot of that, uh, like redoing cork tape handles, all that kind of stuff we do at the Good. shop. No Good. problem. Yeah. So I want to go into your fishing history just a sure. little bit because I want to make it clear to everybody who's watching sure. that you, you're not just a guy with a business. You love this sport. You know this sport. Yeah. You know what people need. How did you get started? Well... Uh, let's see. The first trip I ever went on, I was probably 11, 12 years old. We had taken a family trip up to Morro Bay. 
and the rest of my family basically wanted to go to Hearst Castle, and I was too cool for that. I didn't want to do that. Well, if it comes so, to Hearst Castle and fishing, I'm going yeah, fishing. Yeah, that's there. it. So I wanted to go fishing. Yeah. So my mom basically talked to the captain, talked to the deckhands. Now wait a minute. So you'd never been fishing before? Why did you? Not on a boat. Oh, Not okay. on a boat before. I grew up in Hawaii. I grew up on the Big Island. Yeah. And we fished over there, but it wasn't so much for fun. It was kind of my dad yelling at us the whole time and, and everything yeah. else. So it wasn't... A little pressure. Very much so. Are you talking yeah, about like was, subsistence fishing? Or? For the most part. Yeah, okay. It was for the most part. Yeah. Very rarely was it for fun. Yeah. Um, Catch those so, fish, man. We're yeah, hungry. We're it, eat was, tonight. it was... Yeah, exactly. A lot, of, a lot of yelling, screaming, that yeah. kind of stuff. A lot of, lot of crying. But yeah. anyways... Um, when I moved over here to California, um, that was basically the first summer trip that we took as a family. And I jumped on, a, I think, a three-quarter day boat that day, something like that. My mom, again, talked to the captain, deckhands, a long time ago, different times, too, you know. So they yeah. were okay babysitting me, basically. And I walked off that boat dragging a big gunny sack full of rockfish. And my mom was there to pick me up, and that was it. I never really... Look back after that. I kind of told her this is, your this is it. Yeah, this is yeah. what I want to do. And it's kind of funny how you had negative experiences in your past with fishing, <laughs> and then <laughs> the first thing you want to do is go fishing. Yeah, it right? was. It never even entered my mind as far as me doing this for a career or for the rest of my life. Yeah, you know, at that time I, I was young too. But um, did you do the deckhand thing? Or I did. That? Yeah. When I came back from that trip. We were in Huntington Beach, and they were still running boats off the city, I mean, off the Seal Beach Pier at the time. Shoot. Don't tell me you were with Eddie Leland. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I did it. I pinned it a couple trips. So I started scrubbing boats and stuff, GW, the let's, city of Let's look city out there and Beach. say hi to Eddie because he's, you know, he's in a battle with cancer right now. So. I have heard that. Yeah. Yes. Eddie, you're the best. Man, yeah, that's... I don't know if you remember me. I was probably this big, but uh, <laughs> yeah, wish you the best there, Mr. Leland. Ye- you, Absolutely. you were a pinhead on the boat. I was. So yeah. I scrubbed, yeah, scrubbed those boats plenty of times. The GW, City uh, Seal Beach, Enterprise, when it was running out of there. Mike Reed, maybe? I, you know, I don't remember. Okay. I wasn't much on there. Yeah. I did, I did a lot more of the Twilight stuff. Yeah. I was running or doing more of that stuff. Uh, let's see, a couple summers of that. And then I started, we actually moved back to the South Bay, up to uh, Gardena. And then I started fishing kind of out of Redondo, 22nd Street. Um, I actually started pinheading out of here, out of 22nd Street, when I was probably 14, 15. Okay. And this is like the new image days. And, oh, my God. Yeah, that's going uh, back. Yeah. Uh, Grande, or the Hustler was here. Everybody was here. Yeah, right. It was right. kind of the heyday. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, from there. And when, I, you, when you became a pinhead, man, mm-hmm. when, the first time somebody asked you to do it, I'm just yeah. curious if you had the same reaction as I had. It was like. I have died and gone to heaven. Oh, I was begging. I get to go fishing for free? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, I was begging. And I, I get to begging. stay on the boat and scrub it like I'm part yes. of this whole thing? Like, oh, I'm very a much. big shot now, right? Very much. Yeah. Oh, no, I was begging to go. Yeah, right. Begging to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of my start. Um, the guys on the, on the new image, in fact, Mark Sonoda. On the Amigo. Another great guy. I used to be his pinhead. Really? <laughs> the new image. Yeah. Have you uh, done, uh, have seen you, him since? No, no. I was going to ask you, did you get psychological? Uh, you know, did Afterwards? you get a psychologist after that? Yeah, no. Working, was, working with Mark can really yeah, mess not, you up, man. Later on in life, I did. Later on in life. <laughs> it manifested later, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually probably, yeah, I'm probably living it right now, actually. But, I just um, got up a two-day trip with him. He was so much fun, man. I love oh, he's the, the best. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's the best. He is. He really is, man. Um, yeah, he, uh, I owe him a lot, man. He taught me how to be a deckhand. Yeah. Um, from that, I graduated high school, jumped on a yacht, um, out of San Diego and I did the yacht thing for a lot of years, the San Diego Cabo thing. Back and he, and forth. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We did the Marlin tournaments and all that kind of stuff. I did boat deliveries down to Cabo for a lot of years. Um, yeah, after that. Did well, you get a captain's license? I, I not officially. Yeah. No, okay. but I okay. didn't. Yeah, no. I, they wanted me to. I always resisted. Yeah, me too. I, I never I just, got one either. I, I should It was have. never really my Goal. ambition. Yeah. yeah. Right. I kind of just wanted to be a really good deckhand. Yeah. And be on deck and, and, and do more of that than sitting up in the, the wheelhouse and, and kind of, you know, being stuck in there all the whole time. So. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, from that, after that, I kind of bounced around from boat to boat and whatever else. And I started working over at Arts Fishing Tackle here and there. Yeah. Part time. You were tw- in your 20s. I was in my 20s. Yeah. Um, I basically just was broken after that, like just physically sore and everything and tired and didn't want to work on the boats anymore and started it's a tough life. working. Yeah, it was, man. And started working more at the shop. And How the hell um, does Mark... He's no spring chicken anymore. I don't know how he, he never stops working. I don't know how he does it. And he's got a big smile on his face, yeah. and he's happy all the time. I don't know how he I does love it. that guy, man. Oh, I give the I give him the utmost respect. I don't mm. know how he does it. Me too. I really don't. Me too. Um, yeah, and that that's kind of it. After that, um, you know, I, I just learned how to wrap rods, fix reels. Those guys at Arts taught me how to do all that stuff, and they had some really really good guys over there. Um, as far as rod building and, yeah, right. and that kind of stuff. Terry would send me over to Pete over at Just Fishing to uh, learn how to do reel repair, that kind of thing. Um, I'm now, there's no I'm, better guy at reel repair than Pete. No, right? he's about as good as they come, yeah. man, you know. And I, I'm sure Terry's not going to see this, man. So he would basically send me over to Pete's with a reel that I hadn't serviced before that I was unfamiliar with. Yeah, And he would basically say, just... Take this to Pete's, tell him you need to service this thing, and don't come back to you. You can do it blindfolded behind your back, you know. So Pete was such a, a, a good teacher to me and, and helped me out so much. He, we would knock that thing out in an afternoon, and we'd just kind of fish the rest of the time. And oh, I'd tell cool. Terry I'd have to go back the next day and the next day and the next day <laughs> and that kind of thing. So, But, uh, yeah, those were, uh, those were good times, man, and, and, and same thing. I owe Pete a lot as well. Yeah, yeah. It's nice of you to recognize Pete. these guys. Yeah, very much so. And and I'm glad I, I get to uh, get to thank these guys. Yeah. You know, is Terry person. still around? Or do you Terry know? is. Terry's yeah. around. What's he He's doing? still in Gardena. Yeah. Um, he's got to be 106 now, right? Just about. No, I'd I'm imagine. Sorry, yeah, no, 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 he's he's out there. He's doing good. Yeah. He's doing real well. He uh, had some family stuff and everything else, but uh, he's he's doing very well. Yeah. Um, my mother and him actually grew up together as neighbors. Yeah. In what a small world this business is. Yeah. I mean, it is. you mentioned Melanie Gonzalez to me. Sure. I've seen her recently. You right. knew her. Yeah. I bet we, if we started Your picking kids. names and stuff, we've got so oh, yeah. many common friends, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm and sure a, guy, a guy that works at your place, Mark Belmonte. Yes. He is a deckhand on the Amigo. He was on our last trip. Yes. I'll tell you, man, what an even temperament he's got. He's <laughs> yeah. so helpful. He yeah. works his tail off. Another guy does. with a great work ethic, and he's such a nice guy. He and, is, and a capable man. deckhand. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to rile Mark up, that's for sure. One way or the other. Right. Yeah, he's pretty even keeled. Perfect guy to have in a tackle store, if you ask me, because he somebody is, walks in the door, they're going to feel right at home with him. Absolutely. He's super knowledgeable. He's out on the water, you know, weekly, basically. So yeah. So he's got the latest and greatest, you know, techniques and everything else for the shop. Aside from working on the boat, the guy fishes everything else to bass and trout and oh, whatever he? else yeah. oh yeah so he's uh he's he's invaluable to me there absolutely are, are you into freshwater fishing oh yeah oh you are oh, yeah we i fish can't get into it i and it's all relative to me i have a young son and uh i, I the most of the fishing i do now is actually like tilapia fishing over at the park with him when i go pick that, him up yeah, after work that makes know? sense and I, I i'm having a blast it's it's as fun as any kind of fishing for me, you know. I'm, sure. We're catching big tilapia too, yeah. man. I mean, they're big. Oh, really? Yeah, i got to come with you two guys. guys. Four or five pounds. How old's your son? He's three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the perfect age, right? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect he, fish for him and everything else, too. He's got some other fish, too, but uh, it, it's it's fast enough fishing. It keeps his attention. Yeah. You know, he's not chasing ducks and, right, and right, right. and stuff, so. No, it works out really good. But, uh, no, we do, uh, me and Mark, we fish trout. We fish bass a lot, me and him. Um, you know, we'll just go to this local park or something like that for an hour or something. or You know, whatever we can. Squeeze sque- in. Yeah, exactly. Right. Whatever we can, you know, manage to get in there. So we live close enough, too, to the beach and the harbor and the bay and everything. We do a lot of that as well. You do surf fishing? We do. I love I surf do. fishing. Oh, I now, love that's surf fishing. my love. Oh, yeah. I really do. Oh, yeah. And I, I, and I haven't had the damn time to even do that this year that yeah. much. But I absolutely, people think it's crazy, but a yellowfin croaker on a chrome crocodile, man, and you that's, feel that. You that's know, good that, times, man. It's great. Fighting the surge it? and everything else, that's is, you know, that, that entails a, a lot of skill and technique and everything else, man. Light line, 
It's it's not easy. I'll tell you a funny Definitely story. I, 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 I never get videotaped with my kids. I'm always videotaping those two schmucks, sure. even today. Sure. And so I hook a fish in the surf, and I look at Philip, and I go, this is a nice fish. Will you just shoot some video of this, please? Sure. So it ends up being a 22 or a 21 and three-quarter inch yellowfin croaker. Wow. We look it up. Sure. There's never been a bigger one. Wow. Fred Oakley had one. Wow. That was the equal wow. size. Wow. So we're, you know, my kids, oh, you got the world record. They're going to have a t- ticker tape parade for you. And they're sure. like, you know, give me a friggin' break. Sure. We're driving all over trying to get it weighed in. We got about four hours into this thing. And I pull in to this Cambodian donut place that I have donuts in once in a while. I yeah. used to. I walk in. I say, hey, girls, how would you like to have this for dinner? And, oh, we'd love it. And I'm out of this, <laughs> man. But at least I got video of the damn thing. Yeah, well, that was yeah, a beautiful man. fish. That's a, a big fish, man. That's a nice one, isn't that it? That is. That but is. I've had, a slug. Uh, I've had a million other guys ever since I said, ah, this is one of the, oh, I caught one that was nine pounds. And so I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. who knows? But that is a big one, man. Uh, what's your yeah. favorite kind of fishing? Uh, probably jig fishing. Yeah? Yeah. For yellows? Fish, or? fish and yellows. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's the best iron. jig fishing yellowtail trip you've ever experienced? One of the best. Uh, one of the best. Let's, let's talk long range, first of all. Okay. Then we'll bring it okay. back to local. I got you. Um, best long range. Well, I, I would probably say. Cedros? A, a long, yep, yep. A long time ago. Me too. Um, it was probably the first season that the Independence was running. And through arts, we had uh, the first 10 day on that thing. And coming home from that trip, we stopped at Cedros and it was phenomenal. Insane. It was insane. Yeah. And it was so good that the next day, I kind of burned myself out yellowtail fishing and I wanted to catch bass and I couldn't get through the yellows to get the bass. So, oh my God. And that's how good that yellow fishing was. Yeah, that um, is incredible. And they, I mean, you take like two wines and you're bit, right? Yeah, it was. And. It was really cool. The Red Rooster was right next to us, and Jeff Tobias was running the boat at the time. He was running, running the rooster? At the, no, no, no. Oh, the, the Andy. Indep- yeah. Andy. And him and Andy on the rooster were having a competition as to who can bounce the biggest yellow back you, and forth. So they You mean with them. their passengers or them no, personally? No, no, no. Them personally. Oh, that is so bitchin'. It was awesome, man. So we're watching these two dudes hooking fish, and they'd walk them up to the side of the boat there, yell over to the other boat. Guy'd come out on deck, and these guys were these guys were bouncing twenty five thirties like they were bass. I love that. Uh, it was so cool. What a great! It was story. really cool to watch those. Who guys won? That. Yeah. Jeff or Jeff Andy? Won. He did. Jeff won. Well, I'll have to tell him yeah. way to go next time. Jeff won. It was it was over thirty. It was maybe thirty five or so. That is so cool. It was insane. It was really insane, man. Um, yeah, that that was. Probably one of the best ones I had seen down there. Yeah. Catch all you want. I used to go with my kids all on the Plutter Supreme every Father's Day. Nice. On a five-day with nice. Tommy. Sure. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. it's just memorable. So. Yeah, and, you know, it's I, I want to go back down there, but uh, it's, it's not the same. Yeah. Not the same as it used to be, you know. You mean fishing on a sword boat as opposed to fishing well, on a Well, I just see just in general yeah. for me. I did a lot of that yacht stuff down there as well. Yeah. Um, before they closed everything, too. So, it... it it kind of, it's sad for me. Yeah. You know? I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, it was, it, it's just different. It's not to say that the operations and stuff now are bad or anything like that, but it, it was just different. different. Fishing them on a big boat like that. Yeah, and, right. You know, and so, but yeah, that that was probably the best yellowtail bite, surface iron bite that uh, I had seen. That's a great one. How about yeah. local fishing? Like, and that, let's include islands, Catalina, Santa Barbara, or uh, just, you know, fishing locally somewhere. I got you, man. It would probably be surface iron fishing. It would probably be... There was a trip on the Outrider that I had. In fact, it was out of here when Tucker had it. Uh, a two-day trip, and we were um, at Pyramid in Clemente. And it... It was just kind of like a normal morning sitting on the pick there, and then they just went bonkers. Um, They were all big fish, too. They were all kind of 30 and up. It wasn't every cast kind of fishing, but, uh, I mean, you had to put a little bit of time in, but the quality was just crazy. Like 25 to 40? Yeah. That big? They were monsters. Damn. Averaging 30. Damn. Um, 
Leave it to that Tucker McComb. I, he found a man, and they, they wanted to go for us, man. That was probably the best one I had seen. Not so much maybe for numbers. Yeah. But, but quality. for quality. Sure quality. For quality. Yeah, like Guadalupe yeah. Island size fish. Exactly. Yeah. It looked like that kind of stuff. It was all big stuff. And wow. it stayed with us quite a while. Um, I'll never forget that one because I lost my magic jig on that trip. What, what was your magic jig? It was an old t- Taddy 45 that I had that just got bit when nothing else would get bit. and Color? It was like a mint, not a mint, it was like a green, gold, sardine, swirly looking thing. Yeah. A really old one. Yeah. I actually found it hanging up in the, the back of the shop at Arts. Um, I think it was actually one of Arts uh-huh. jigs, you know, and... I don't even know if I asked Terry if I could take it. I just I would just look at it I every day. That. I gotta have that thing, man, and it was That's magic. Get bit. That sucker was magic, really? man. And I'll never forget it because it was one of those trips that I didn't have to throw it, but I did for whatever reason. Because they were biting everything. Yeah, yeah, I had a couple already, and I had just caught one. They had gaffed it, thrown it on the deck. And I was too lazy to retie. That thing was tied up. I grabbed it, fired it out, got bit, and just got freight trained and broken off in the reef. And I just, I'm, I could probably cry right now if I thought about it. I'll bet, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Because I have never had one, you know, Never had since. a magic jig no, like that not, since. not like that. Oh, not my God. like that one. That one was... Uh, did no, you ever think about hiring divers to dive the reef and find the thing? Man? I was ready to go myself. <laughs> I was ready, man. I, I kind of stopped fishing for a while, man, and had to breathe and kind of gather myself. Yeah, that was a bad one. Oh, but my that God. Was a, that was one of the best jigs that uh, I, I had ever. Well, best one I had ever owned, best one I, one of the best I've ever seen, really. You know, I talk to a lot of new guys coming into the sport. Mm-hmm. They're the life's blood, you know, oh, because yeah. we need these, especially Very kids. Much. Like, your three-year-old's going to grow up and be a fisherman, and oh, yeah. my kids still fish like crazy. Sure. What could, advice would you give them about jig fishing? And, and maybe you could take us through, does a guy start with a 10-foot rod? Does he? What, what does he start with? And... You know, just a little bit about, sure. you know, watching the water and paying attention to your, sure. all those things. Sure, sure. For, first and foremost, I would recommend that guys start with a little shorter rod, maybe eight foot yeah. even. Right. Ten's a big um, rod for ten's a, a lot of rod. starting out. Ten's a lot of rod. Yeah. Ten's a lot of rod, even for somebody that's proficient at it. Um, you got to be a pretty big guy, stature-wise, just to kind of handle that thing um, and, and use it correctly. But an eight-foot rod will get you out there plenty far. Um, it'll also allow you to, you know, learn how to fight fish on a longer rod. You have less leverage. Definitely a lot harder to pull on bigger fish with a longer rod. Eight foot still not too bad. Doesn't beat you up too much. Yeah. But you still get some castability with it. Uh, as far as a reel goes, something that, you know, you can fish 30 pound on, even 40, something like that. Doesn't have to be a huge one, Torium 20, Trinidad 20 size reel, 16 or 20 is just fine. Um, as far as fishing those things, it is, it's a lot of observation, you know. There's, you see a turn, sure, dip at the water, sure. right? Birds, birds are a dead giveaway. Yep. You can kind of learn how to read the different birds and kind of how they're acting and what they're doing. We'll kind of tell you what the fish are doing as well. Um, there are times when you kind of just go up to the bow and make blind fan casts and everything when you don't see any kind of sign or anything. Fan casting is making a cast in several different areas for people who don't know, right? That's it. Yeah. Kind of just standing Covering in that. one spot and kind of fan casting from your starting at one side and kind of working your way to the other side there. And then work back. And you can work back as well. Yeah. Um, again, you know, the whole time you're kind of looking for signs, bird signs, boils, um, uh, you know, breezing fish, stuff like that. Uh, the other thing you should really pay attention to is current, kind of how that boat's sitting and where that chum's going. Um, wind as well is going to kind of affect how that boat's sitting as, as well too. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing I would tell guys to uh, just starting to jig fish is to not get frustrated with casting. Yeah. Casting is... is a giant part of jig fishing and the better you are at casting the better your chances are of hooking a fish um 
it, it, it's it's practice a, it's at the a, park. It is. It's a learning. Or? It's a learning curve thing, yeah. man. You got to practice, and it, it's get your reps in, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know uh, how familiar everybody is with golf, but it's just like golf, where even the best players still go to the driving range and practice yeah, before they play and everything else. Right. And it's I'm not saying go out every you know afternoon and go to the football field and start casting, but it can't hurt. Right. You can't. You're hurt only you. gonna get better. That's it. Um, so, you know, you might get some backlashes and, and everything else and just, it happens to everyone. It doesn't happen as frequent, you know, for the guys that are, are more comfortable doing it, but everybody still gets them. So don't get frustrated. Don't get discouraged. As long as you're getting that lure out there, it doesn't have to be a hundred yard cast. As long as you're getting it out there and you're not blowing your reel out and you can have some cranks for retrieval and stuff, you're, you're fishing. Yeah. You're jig fishing. Right. And it everything will come in time. This is such great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, it will. It'll come in time. It'll come in practice. Um, don't get discouraged. You know, you see that deckhand go over. You see the cook. This is a classic one. You see the cook come out of the galley and real casually comes over, grabs one of the boat rods, and then fires this jig out 150 yards or something and hangs the fish for his Immediately. cast. Immediately. Right. Yeah. And everybody just goes, what the hell? Right. Yeah. I want to do that too. Right. You know, exactly. but what they got to understand is that this guy's out there every day. Yeah. He probably has been since he was this big. Um, and he saw Boyle right out there that's just right. a moment before. He saw or something he saw or yep. somebody saw something and told him yep. or something. So it's a little different. It's not the same as, as you, you know, going out there and, and, and just making a, few casts and hooking them it's not that easy these guys you know done this for a long time they do it for their living basically so to see that and not to be you know to kind of you know shoot for that and not attain it it's it's not really it's not a realistic goal for somebody just it takes time and it takes a lot of time yeah um the casting thing too Again, that's such a huge part of, of jig fishing in that the further you can cast, the more water you're covering, the chances, you know, of you hooking a fish go, go exponentially up. up. Right. right. Especially a bigger fish that tend to hang back, a little more wary, kind of hang back a little further than uh, the smaller, more aggressive fish. So you generally have a, a shot at a, a better quality size fish. And, and what it really boils down to is if you can make a longer cast than everybody on the boat, you are essentially fishing water that nobody else is fishing. That's right. So you're accessing fish that really nobody else can can touch. So, you know, guys that are really proficient at it, and they can kind of figure out the formula, I guess. Yeah. Kind of plug in everything where it needs to be plugged in and figure out the right equation for this thing. Um, those are the guys that you see, you know, up in the bow, usually really quietly doing all the destruction up there. And at the end of the day, you like, look, whoa. yeah, oh my God, this guy had three yellows and yeah, you know, well, that a bag happen? full of barracuda and whatever else. Yeah. Right. So it's, again, it's a thing. Um, it's practice. I mean, I, when, when I started jig fit, well, when I started to learn how to cast, I started at my grandma's pool Yeah. and I'll, I'll never forget. I broke a tile at the end of the pool and what it meant was that i could cast the length of the pool and not get a backlash it was the first one i ever had ever done i thought it meant grandma was going to kill you actually but that uh, was the last cast i made in my grandma's pool (laughs) then she kicked me out and then i was basically over to laundry park every day throwing a 45 (laughs) and that was kind of the beginning of the end for me with that yeah um even now when I go out fishing, you know, I just love jig fishing so much that, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll stick with it all day. And even if I don't. Even if you can see baits a little more effective. I mean, I might, I might yeah, put a bait on it, right? or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, not to say that I just, I'm so just gung-ho, die-hard jig fishing. But um, I, I kind of look at it, too. And, and guys that have fished with me, you know, I, I, I call it casting practice. Yeah, know, right. So it's not f- or not i mean i'm up there and okay i didn't get hit or anything like that i didn't get a bite but at the same time i put in a lot of casts man and that's just again it's just practicing it's it's reinforcing all the stuff and muscle memory and everything else so i don't look at it as a bad trip per se it's, it's casting practice. right you're getting better at that's your craft it. yeah that's it how important is color the color of the jig 
Uh, how, do you, how do you choose the right jig? What should you use? Where do I find the magic jig, Bob? Uh, you know, I wish I could <laughs> tell you, Phil, but I am on the quest myself, man. <laughs> I First and foremost, I think size is more important than uh, most things in a jig, okay. especially color. Yeah. The size. Are um, you matching the hatch? Is that what you're talking I'm, about I'm, or I'm what? I'm really trying to match the size of bait that we have that we're carrying or yeah. that's in the water. Yeah. Um, so if you're fishing big grade fish, uh -huh. but you can see they're on micros, uh -huh. you're fishing a smaller jig. I am. That makes sense. I am. Yeah. I'm trying to fish a smaller jig. I'll, I'll try to, to get away and maybe you know throw a bigger jig just for a little more distance maybe yeah stuff like that but uh it, it won't last long if i don't get bit yes and they're keying in on that small stuff yeah so i think size is a lot more important than color um secondly so the first thing i do if i don't get bit is i don't necessarily i'll start scaling down i'll start scaling down in jig size um starting with a full-size jig Maybe back it down to something, you know, 45, then a tidy C, then even smaller if I can't get bit on that. Yeah. Um, past that, if I can see a certain size jig or they're really keen in it on a size of bait, then I'll start messing with retrieves. I'll start varying retrieve speeds. I'll start going fast, slow, whatever it might be. I'll throw jigs in that same size that have different retrieve rates yeah some fish better slow some have you know some fish better fast that type of thing so i'll kind of mess with that first yeah um color for me man i i kind of go with more contrasts so i kind of look at it as your solid mint jig okay or a solid white jig whatever it might be versus a two-toned or a three-toned color jig. yeah and it's just the contrast of the colors. Not so much, I don't buy too much into um, color patterns as, as I do the contrasts yeah. of the colors. Yes. So um, macro patterns, I still like, again, because I think more than a green or a blue macro, they're just kind of seeing that stripes and the contrast against that background. Um, so I use, a lot, I use macro stuff a lot. Um, Sard mint stuff, blue stuff, I do. I, I use a lot of that stuff as well. But, again, it's going to be like I'll have two of the same jig, and one will be in a solid color, one will be in a two-tone color. So yeah. I'll have a solid mint, and then I'll have like a solid mint white. So, for me, that's kind of day-to-day as far as conditions are concerned, what the fish might see a little better. And it might have to do with the sun, cloud cover, yeah. water clarity, um, lots of that stuff. But it's it's not an exact science. Right. You know, and, and for every jig that I tie on that I think is the one, you know, I, I got the guy over there, you know. Roping him. <laughs> well, yeah, just killing him on the, you know, swap meat jig that has no paint on him. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? With yeah, the rusty right. treble hook and, and everything else. So it's not an exact science. Right. Um, for whatever reason, you know, that guy is doing well with that pattern, color, size, whatever it might be. Um, it, to me, I, it doesn't matter if he's a rent rod guy or, or if he's a seasoned veteran, regular, or anything. If that guy is successful that trip, then I'm going to try to mimic what he's doing. Sure. So I'm looking at that beat up jig and I'm looking in my jig bucket and oh, I still. Man, do I have one of those? That's it. Yeah. And I, and I still carry a jig bucket. And I'm rummaging through my jig bucket looking for something that uh, matches up with whatever he's got going. Sure, so, it makes sense, right? Yeah, that's it. And I, I tell my customers that a lot, too. You know, they ask me for tips and everything else. And being that I can't be on the boat with them or anything like that, my best advice is look at what the guy that is, what he's successful. doing. Successful. That, that is successful. And look at what he's doing and just try your best to, to duplicate that. Right. And if you can't, then just learn from them and try to take as much of that stuff in as you can. Then come to my tackle shop after, buy the stuff you need, and then go back out and apply it. There you go. So. Yeah. You mentioned casting and practicing for mm -hmm. distance. How about accuracy? How important is being accurate with your cast? It becomes more important. I think it becomes more important the more 
you, the more you can identify what's going on, meaning the more stuff that you can read, the more signs you can read. Birds dipping, boils. Bird action, boils, current, that type of stuff. I think that becomes more important the more... You, you can recognize that. all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Because you want to cast right to where that bird dipped. Right. Or a little beyond it, maybe. Right. Yeah. Even even maybe in the direction that that fish is heading. You want to try to head him off as opposed to trying to make that cast behind him. Yeah. Um, sometimes if you have an idea where, where that fish is, you'd want to lead him a little more or less, too, depending. You know, so it does. It does very much affect jig fishing. Um uh, but I think, again, it, it's it's more for, maybe I don't want to say the advanced guy, but maybe not for the beginner. For the beginner, I wouldn't worry too much about that. As, Accuracy. Yeah, yeah as, as to just get it out there. Get some distance. Cover some water. Covering water is kind of your best bet in jig fishing. Uh, you, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, you have made that point crystal clear yeah. in this podcast. I mean, when you said... If you can make a longer cast, you're fishing in water that nobody else is fishing in. Man, that just hit me. It was like, yeah, yeah you're right. That's yeah. so true. Yeah, you're, you're, you're accessing water and fish that unless some guy gets, you know, some unreal Michael Phelps sardine or something, you know, and swim outside the curtain, go that way, you know, otherwise, you know, other than that scenario, you don't, you don't get to touch those fish. Yeah. So it does give you a, a really big advantage in that sense in that it allows you to access stuff that most guys can't get to um again usually they're a little bigger fish a little better quality fish and that they hang back a little more they're a little more wary a little more spooky so um yeah all those things combined man i just i really enjoy jig fishing i always have those were always kind of my heroes you know, when I was pinheading and deckhanding. Do you stuff. have anybody in mind, by the way, who was an incredible jig fisherman? Did you know Earl Pace? I yeah. He made the pep oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't know him, but yeah. I know you. I know who he is. Yeah, I, he's I didn't, come out and right, I, a lot. Yeah. Sure. There was uh, a guy, a deckhand. Nobody knows him. I'm sure Howard Warbase on the Redondo Special. I don't know if you know him. Howard Warbase. He was an incredible so jig fisherman. He. I never knew his last name. However, I knew a Howard when I was up in Redondo. That was when uh, I used to fish the double half days on the city. Yeah. With Roy and Doris. Oh, shoot. Okay. It's kind of back in those years. Right. Yeah. So I remember a Howard back then. But Got I that don't... tequila bottle open at the end of the trip. Roy. Oh, and... dude. There were some hairy times on there. TC and Bacon and those guys. I was freaking terrified. I don't know why. I was a pinhead on the Redondo session. I had to walk by. The city of Redondo on my way out. Sure. And Roy would be sitting there with that mustache, <laughs> drinking that tequila, and I was terrified. He'd go, hey, kid. You know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. how you doing? You know, it was nice. He was always sure. nice. And oh, Doris yeah. was too, but it scared oh, yeah. the hell out of me. You oh, know? yeah. He had this kind of pirate look. Sure. Right? Oh, no. He was he was yeah. that way. And the, the way he talked. Yeah, too. Just the way yeah. he talked. That's yeah. also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, okay, so did you know Howard? I did it. I did it. But I knew he the name. And, yeah. Yeah. I, Mark Lampson at, at Arts. Yeah. He taught he me was a lot about it. He was really good. He was a very, very good jig, uh, jig fisherman. Um, you know, a lot of the regulars, when I used to work out of here, or when I was deckhanding out of here, a lot of the regulars, I, and um, Whitey and Chuck used to come out with us all the time. Um, but anyways, it, it wasn't so much a particular guy as it was just kind of drawn from all these different old yeah, timers and right. everybody else. How you know? cool it was to watch them do that. It was that, an art. It was. And that was uh, that was more cool for me than anything. Yeah. Just kind of just watching those guys and picking their brains. And, and, and more than that, just kind of being a fly on the wall. Yeah. You know, listening to these guys talk, you know, amongst each other about what they're seeing and, and how to change it up. And, yeah. And, and why and everything else. Um, I'll tell you a good Howard Warbase has nothing to do with fishing, though. Yeah, but yeah, he yeah. took my brother and I, my parents, I don't even know why my parents agreed to this, but we were probably 13, 14, sure. took us to Los Alamitos. You mentioned that. Yeah. We're sitting up in the grandstands way up high and a pigeon craps on my brother's head, right? Yeah. So Howard's laughing about that. And then we're looking at the program, and guess what the next race? There's a horse called Bird Brain. <laughs> And we're all laughing about it, you yeah. know, and, yeah. you know, we're kids, so yeah. he's teaching us how to gamble, and 
freaking bird brain, nobody bet Good. on it, was a 50 to Came 1 in. shot and won and paid 106 bucks for a $2 bet. And Howard goes, that was, meant that to was be. your omen, man. Meant to be, man. That was, fish, that was the fish gods. Oh, yeah, you. that was the fish gods at work. Some of those local guys, you know, you look at long-range fishermen, but you look at these guys on the half-day boats back in those days, and they were some of the yeah. best fishermen oh, yeah. anywhere. And I, sure. I sometimes, I mean, I think it's the repetitiveness yeah. Of local fishing, like you're always trying to choose a hot bait. We're on an albacore trip. Sure, you may choose a hot bait twice the right. whole day. Right, but very true. You know, you're working at it all the time on very those local true. boats. Very true. Those guys, to me, those are still. I don't want to say the best guys, but some of the best. They're guys. right up there. And it's local fishing is hard. Yeah, it gets the most pressure. I mean, conditions are usually not the greatest. Um, you know, you, the, the boats are usually more crowded and everything else. So, you know, if you can be successful on a half-day boat consistently, you can kind of catch fish on any trip. Yeah. You'll be okay on just about anything you jump on. Yeah. So, yeah, no, some of the best guys, even though they're the shortest trips, some of the best guys to me are, are the half-day guys, half-day regulars. Fred Fukunaga. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with Fred, but Fred... Uh, I, I'm, Is he on the Monte Carlo I was just going to say, I think Fred's still fishing on the Monte. I see him all the time. Yep. He watches this. All, he watches Does he? Free, yeah, How you doing, Fred? Me. Fred, good seeing you. You're Fred. the man. Fred, <laughs> Fred's the best. Fred's the best, and Fred. he's a gentleman. And yep. he, uh, when he told me he watches this podcast all the time, that awesome. made me feel so good because I, I have a high esteem for him. Oh yeah, yeah. Fred's awesome. He's a hell of a fisherman, Mr. Art Preston. Yeah, his partner in crime there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those yeah, good guys, guys, man. They are, and they are phenomenal Local guys. Phenomenal fishermen. Yeah, both those guys are killers, man. Killers. Definitely. The you know, order. something else I want to talk to you about, yes, uh, and that is, you know, fishing's expensive now. Yeah. It's getting expensive. It is. So, And we got this whole inflation going on now, mm -hmm. and there's more bad economic news on the horizon, at least it appears. I'm sure. no economist, but I read, and sure. it looks like we're in for some tough times. So yeah. can we talk a little bit about surf fishing? And you, sure, you take your son tilapia fishing. Yeah. So grandpa and me be on a fixed income. Yeah. And he still wants to share the love of fishing sure. with his grandkids sure. because he knows how good this all is for kids. Yeah, absolutely. There's still opportunities to do it, right? Can you mm -hmm. talk about some of those? Very much so, man. Very much so. First and foremost, man, and the easiest one for us in California is the pier. It's the one place that you still don't need a fishing license. And most of them are open, you know, I don't want to say 24 hours, but they're open, you know, Pretty avail availably, uh, the avail availability of them, you know, is, is pretty good for most people. I mean, you pretty much everybody kind of lives close to one, you know. And again, you don't need a fishing license. You could literally take a sabiki rig out there and go catch some mackerel and croaker and whatever else and have a great time. Right, exactly. That's for the point, right? Minimal, yes, for the, you know, a couple bucks for a sabiki rig and you could even go to you know walmart or something and buy a little combo and away you go well i'm sure you've got we do. that are affordable we right? do yeah. yeah we have that kind of stuff as well yeah yeah absolutely um you know the other one again is surf fishing yeah you do need a fishing license for that but um starting this year they changed that as to where it expires from the date of purchase now no longer the right. calendar year right so that's a bonus as well um, to go out get your fishing license and go fishing. Um, surf fishing, we probably have one of the best stretches here, you know, in, in California as far as variety goes. And, um, when you say, you know, are you talking about all of Southern California? Or are you talking about like Huntington Beach, or uh, like Newport from, Beach, maybe Seal Beach, Southern California? Yeah, yeah, in, in it's general, it's pretty diverse. Yeah, it's. You know, you can go on pretty much any given day, man, and, and catch a variety of fish down yeah. there. Yeah. There'd be a halibut, a corbina, a croaker, leopard shark. Um, you can kind of pick and choose almost as to what you want to target even. Yeah. And that's how good of a fishery it is. Yeah. Um, you know, the other one to me is uh, um, like a harbor or a bay, something like that, a little public dock or the jetty something like that now that's a little maybe more precarious to get out on the rocks and stuff yeah. for younger kids and Old older gentlemen like older gentlemen and stuff too it's a little little sketchy on the rocks and stuff like that but a lot of those harbors have public docks that you can go fishing on um little beaches and stuff like that you know swimming beaches that allow fishing as well yeah 
So those are nice. Um, same thing. You don't have to pay for anything other than parking, maybe something like that. Um, tackle is basic. Hook, sinker, you know, maybe a frozen anchovy or a strip of squid, something like that for bait. If you wanted to fish lures, you could do it with a little swim bait that costs, you know, a dollar or two, something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. A little bass outfit and have at it. Um, the city parks are... Is that a thing? You can actually... It sounds like you catch good fish in there, right? The city parks? Yeah. We do phenomenal in there. Really? Yeah. It's not everyone, yeah. but a lot of these parks are stocked. They're stocked with trout in the winter, catfish in the summer. Most of them have bass and bluegill and carp, stuff like that in them already. It's kind of like the half day fishing thing, man, where it, you know, it gets a lot of pressure. It's So you got to know what you're doing. It's tough to catch fish. Fish real light tackle, I'm guessing. Light tackle is key. Absolutely. Light tackle is key. Uh, the other is to wake up early. Try to get out there before anybody else does. Yeah. That kind of gives you your best shot at it, too. How's that go over with a three-year-old? I don't do that. Oh, okay. No, we, we literally you're go after, after work. School. Yeah, we're going after work. We're yeah. actually trying to beat the sun, That yeah. kind of going down, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. But um, we found a couple spots uh, since all the rain and stuff that we had earlier the year in the year there that... Uh, filled up all these different little lakes and everything else to capacity and and the tilapia have been going crazy the bass have been going crazy and it's it's accessible to anybody really um without giving my spot away man it's no, basically, no, 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 no 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 but without giving my spot away man you know any of these city parks um they'll have something to catch in there yeah and my best advice is to very respectfully and, and graciously ask a local guy that you see fishing there as to, you know. Maybe, Excuse me, sir. Yes. Let's start and, with that, right? And that's it. Be very respectful, courteous, and everything else. And uh, maybe they can, you know, key in on something or maybe a spot. A location or just watch there. what he's doing, too. Or right? just watch what he's doing. Yeah. 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 And uh, if he's catching fish, man, I, again, just try to duplicate what he's doing as best as you can. You can figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most guys, though, I mean, if you're if you're respectful and courteous, man, those guys will help you out. They might not give you everything, but they'll get you started. Yeah, exactly. You know, they they can get you on your way, and you know, half the fun, man, is the journey, right? Just yeah, absolutely. It out yourself, and um, if you're successful with something that you kind of came up with on your own, it is usually a little more gratifying. It totally know? is. So, yeah. So yeah, it's, that's part of the beauty of surf fishing because you're kind of like the captain. Very much so. So when you succeed, you feel like, hey, I figured that's this right. out. That's right. That's right, man. Pick yeah. the right lure at the right time. Fish the right area. All that. Yeah. yeah. And that that is that's a lot of the allure of fishing is figuring out the puzzle. Right, and, and catching a fish. Those are the fish. guys I find that kick butt. Sometimes when I go, like I went with Dave Dodge, who's sure. an old captain. Sure, know, you know, sure, Dave. sure. But we went to a local lake, and I yep. can't even remember what it was. And I was there. I actually told him, no, I didn't want to go. <laughs> and then he goes, well, we haven't seen each other for And I go, oh, yeah, sure. okay, then I'll go. Now I'll go. Sure. So sure. I pretty much, you know, I threw, put my line. Now, Dave, he was like watching, 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 making further. He's like trying to unravel the puzzle. Right. All of a sudden, he's railing them. And he's killing them. And there's a little Mexican family sure. next to us. And they have no clue right. how to do it or what to do. Sure. Pretty soon he's handing the ride to these kids. They're catching their first fish. That's Turned it. into a wonderful experience. Awesome. Yeah. That's it. That, yeah. For me, that's yeah, that's that's what it's all about for me. That, yeah. That, that to me is uh, it, it's what it's all about, man. Do you ever um, drive into Mexico and do any fishing? I used to, used to a lot. I used to a what lot. did you like to do? Did you go bar perch fishing down there? Or? Uh no. I would. Yeah, we would do that actually. Yeah. Um, kind of like in Sonata way. Oh yeah. yeah. Good ones too. Yeah, yeah, good ones too, man. But yeah, more fishing at Playa Mission, maybe sure. down by Ensenada. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. M more of my fishing down there were um, yellow. Basically, and stuff. well, no, yeah, a lot of that bufador, that kind of thing. But it would be more like. I would do a delivery um, for a boat, for a yacht down in Cabo, fly back to San Diego, and then we would take the vehicles down. We'd drive the trucks oh, down or shit, whatever. Oh, so cool. And then a, you'd hit spots. Yeah, so we'd fish, camp surf all the way down, that kind of thing. We'd have, like, Fitch. a delivery. We'd have a, de a deadline as to when we needed to be there and yeah. kind of 
we'd make it up in between. And as long as we got there on time and, you know, the vehicles in one piece and everything else, they were happy. Yeah. We could kind of do what we wanted in between. Yeah. So we did a lot of that kind of stuff. We'd, we'd actually try to beeline it down to, like, Laguna Manuela down there. Yeah. Kind of Guerrero Negro down yeah. there. And camp down there and fish down there. That's a great place to fish. Oh, man. And that's why. Insane. Yeah, and that's why. We would kind of just forego everything else to get more time down there. That is, makes is sense. Our deal, so. And then shoot across the Vizcayano Desert. And then we just jam down there and just kind of, usually by that time, too, we were in a time crunch because we'd overstay. You too much. Yeah, we'd go. overstay our, our stop. And then, yeah. we got to get to Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and we're, we're doing the coffee thing, driving at night when <laughs> we're not supposed to. And, Naughty. Yeah, exactly. Uh, somebody asked me that, are you driving? You don't drive at night, do you? And I go, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, yeah. I had definitely a not. suburban with nine people in it. <laughs> my wife from Costa Rica, her mother, her kids, my kids, and I was in Santa Rosalia, sure. getting ready to make that cross over to Guerrero. Sure. Two o'clock in the morning, I said sure. to my kids, "Go over there and get me a cup of coffee." Dad, my Spanish is go get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> it's cafe. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Large. Not advisable. Yeah. To no, drive it's not. Night. There's cows on the road, and there's all yeah. kinds of stuff you can get. Yeah, no, 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 definitely nothing not good, a good happens idea. at night most of the time, anyway. No, not a good. You've idea. done it. I've done it. Yeah, we're naughty boys. Yeah, and, it, and I don't want to do it again. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I haven't done it for. Uh, it's been at least two weeks. So. <laughs> doing good. You're doing good, man. <laughs> You're you. doing good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, well on your way. Well on your way. Yeah. But I've yeah. had some magical trips surf fishing down there, man. It sounds like you have too. What were you sure. catching down around Guerrero? Everything. Yeah? Uh, sea bass, halibut, Oh, you, you were on the sea bass from the surf? Oh, yeah. That's so busy. Oh, yeah. They have like a little area where it's kind of like, like Newport in that they have like these little natural finger jetty looking things. Yeah. Little rock outcropping reef features. And just depending on the time and tide and everything else, man, um, you just kind of hit those little pockets in there. And it could be anything from sea bass to halibut to corbina to you name it. You, are bass. you fishing? Were you, do you remember at night you could look out and see the Cedros Lighthouse? Do you, from down, no. No? No, I never saw that Okay, from there. I know that's oh. a good spot for sea bass. There's a guy, ah, guy named Nick. Her, did you know Nick Curcio? I, I he knew who in? he was. He, must come he in came into the shop. He used lot, to come yeah. into the shop. Yeah, right. Nick used to come into the shop. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Oh, yeah. Terry would have him do his book signings and all that oh, kind yeah, of stuff. Oh, right. yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Sure. I saw him like uh, a few months ago. Oh, wow. He's doing well. Good. He looked great and he's doing well. Oh, very he good. He was my professor at Loyola, besides being a huge fly fishing expert <laughs> right, and long right, range right, right. guy and all that wow, stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I walked know. into his class, man, and he started talking about albacore fishing and i go like oh my god i'm in the right class yeah i'm gonna ace this class i stand a chance to actually pass a course <laughs> yeah, there yeah i'll be successful here yeah. no we can do this exactly yeah long range fishing is that something that you enjoy and if somebody wants to get into that do you recommend that they start in the half day and go to the or just jump to the long range nowadays uh, you know man i would i would recommend that these guys start small yeah start small um you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a half day, but at least an overnight trip, something like that, three-quarter day trip. More of it has to do with just getting used to how our boats function, bait fishing and, and you know, going up to the live well and choosing baits and um, it, just everything about that, even just the etiquette on the boat, I guess, and just kind of how they operate. Yeah. Um, just the, I think it would make it more enjoyable. Yeah, I, I agree. For somebody that uh, kind of knew the drill. Yeah. And I think if they were to do that, and, and, and they don't have to go every week or anything like that, but at least go a few times. And I think once they do get on a long-range boat, I think they would actually appreciate it more, too. Yeah. have a better time. Yeah, oh, yeah. So. Rob, well, I concur 100% with you. It is also conceivable nowadays with the advancements in tackle uh -huh. and the crews in San Diego sure. that somebody, a lady who's never fished a day in her life, could go out tomorrow and catch a 200-pound bluefin. Too. Yeah. It's conceivable, well, right? It happens all the time. I know. Yeah. I, That's the, Pinch me, I'm dreaming. Yeah. No, it happens. It's, it's insane to think that, but it happens quite often. I see it at my shop. You know, we'll set somebody up, literally first outfit, first trip, that kind of thing, come back with a picture of a 200-pounder. You know, it, it's awesome. 
It's awesome. It really is. Yeah, it's awesome, man. What do you think about, as you look 50 years into the future, is this still going to be a thing? And I'll be gone. So you're going to have to look up there and say, Phil. I don't know about that, man. I think I'm probably right behind you at that point. Do you think that this will be a thing? There's a lot of governmental pressures to shut fishing down. Do you think it will sustain and make it through the future? I hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. Um, I think it will. Probably not in the same yeah. form that we're used to. Yeah. Um, but I think it'll kind of always be there in, in some form or another for everybody. Um, I, I got a bad feeling that it's going to be heavily restricted. Yeah. Um, you know, w- with good intentions, but maybe not good results. The that road to thing. hell is paved with good intentions. That's right, man. That's right. So, you know, I would hope that, uh, like you were saying earlier, the, the kids and everything. Um, well, I want to bring that. Younger generation, yeah. you know. Kinda, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring that back to that because you're taking sure. your three-year-old fishing. Sure. You're obviously a father who wants the best for his son. Sure. How important is it for kids to get out into the outdoors, whether it's going for a walk, going fishing, going hunting, Getting away from these damn telephones, yeah. unless they're watching Friedman Adventures. Yeah, or, exactly, of course. Look, they can exactly. watch that 24 hours a day. Of course. No, I'm kidding. Of course. It's really important, isn't it? I, I think now more than ever. Yeah. I, I think now more than ever. Um, I think fishing is a great way to do that for a kid, um, especially if you can get them, you know, on a boat or something like that. In that it's not just fishing, it's it's boating, it's, it's seeing seals at the bait t- you know yeah. at the bait receiver it's right. maybe seeing a dolphin or a porpoise or a whale or something out there um even the birds seeing a pelican or something for the first time anything you know, like it's, that. it's yeah. that it's more than the fishing it's that yes and i think that kind of just rolls over into a lot of other things that maybe these kids will you know develop in their life as far as maybe i don't want to say conservation you know whatever it may be conservation or just um, be environmentally conscious, sure. that type of thing. Sure, but I, I think it's very important. Me too. Very, very important. Whether they catch a fish or not, just the experience of going is, uh, I think, more important than ever. Really, I yeah. completely enjoyed this, doing this with you. I, I, <laughs> I did too. And I feel Phil. like we only scratched the surface, and yep. we're going to have to do it again. I'm going to have to Sounds come good. down to your shop. Yeah, please And do. give people a tour of the shop, do it, uh, do. a podcast down there, and we'll do sure. that. Um, before we go, yes, um, give your place a plug, address, phone numbers. Do got you it. have any specials coming up that you, if you yeah. want to mention? Anything like that. Uh, I got turn you. it over to you. I got you. Thank you, Phil. Um, it's Aloha Fishing Tackle, Fountain Valley. It's uh, right off the 405 freeway at Magnolia. So the cross streets are Magnolia and Warner, literally like a half block from the freeway. We're there uh, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 6, and 10 to 4 on Saturday, closed Sunday, Mondays. As far as, like, anything event-wise coming up, I really don't have anything planned or anything like that, but uh, just come on down, man. Kind of every day is a, a pretty good event over at the shop, man, one form or another, especially if Bill Monty's there, man. So. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to come down laughs. and give him some. Not, not stop laughs with, with Bill Monty, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Rob. But, Thank Phil, you so much. Thank you for it's having really me. It's really good to see you again. Yeah, man. Really Fantastic. good catching up, Phil. Thank yeah, you and so it's much. been a long time. I'm glad we got yeah. back together. Yeah, definitely. Man. All right, everybody. Aloha Appreciate Fishing it. Tackle. Drop by and see Rob and his great crew really, really soon. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you, Phil.